You are listening to Let's Talk Purpose Live, because who you are is important to what you do and where you are going. And now for your host, Lisa Schwartz. Good morning, everybody. It is a beautiful Texas morning in April, April 4th. Uh, we're usually in our po- it's, May 4th. It's May. It is May 4th. <laughs> I'm going to need to start over. <laughs> I don't need to start this whole Re-roll. day. Reroll. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You know, I, I I cannot believe how cold it's been here. I know. We've had, yeah, la- yesterday and all last night. Yeah. It's chilly. I like Usually it. we're in our pool by now. And it, every time our pool hits about 76 degrees, we have a cold something, something, mm-hmm. and it bops down to about 74. And I'm like... That's too cold. It's too cold. I'll get in it when it's about 78. And I'll get in it at 76 if it's super warm outside, but not when it's, you know, 80 degrees mm-hmm. outside. Anyways, I'm a little spoiled. <laughs> Good morning, Brittany. Good morning. BP Daddy joining us this morning. Go ahead and tell us about our sponsors. Okay. We still have Innovative Construction Services, our Texas-owned family business providing roofing and various construction needs in the DFW area and beyond. And we saw them post on Facebook this morning. Check them out. Innovative Construction Services. They've got a new shop that they did, a new driveway extension and patio, and it looks amazing. Yeah, it does look amazing. So check them out on there. Give them a call as they love the opportunity to serve you with any roofing and construction needs. And there's a phone, 817-672-5272, or info at InnovativeSVC.com. And then we have Express Employment Professionals, a staffing company that does their best to bring hope to our community. Let's look, they've got hot jobs for this month. Hot jobs. Hot jobs. Hot jobs. Customer I service. Can't help, I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> Customer service, purchasing, and administrative starting at 17 to $20 an hour. If you or someone you know is interested, text the word WORK to Sonia at 817-371-0218, and she will hook you up. Excellent. We always appreciate our sponsors for supporting um, our shows. Um, we already have some people watching this morning. We have Miss Sharon Watts is with us this morning. My mama is watching this morning mm-hmm, as well. If much. you have joined us live, if you would put a hello, give us a wave, whether you're on Facebook or whether on YouTube, we want to say good morning to you. Uh, Tammy Murphy is with us this morning. Hey. I'm stoked about our uh, guest. This is going to be fun. This yeah, gonna be it interesting. is going to be fun. So Shay Stone comes to us. Uh, she is uh, an author of a book called Be Better Than You, um, which I love that title. Love that, like mm-hmm. love that title. And I, I think, I don't know if I found you or if you found me, um, but it doesn't matter. Here we are all hooked <laughs> up. Um, Shay, you're from California. Is that correct? Did I get that? I right? am. I'm from Los Angeles. Los Angeles, California. Ooh. So good morning. Is it, how, what's your weather been like out there? It's actually been weird. Uh, so yeah. it gets it gets hot during the day, and then it gets super cold at night, and it's mm-hmm. it's it's kind of tough to know which thread to follow around here. Yeah. So you just stay. You know, like I have a beanie. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I got layers right. on. I can wrap it up right. when it's cold. Yeah. Take it off Jacket when it gets right warm. My side, just in case. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's how it's been lately. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, it is weird. So I, with that, when I was this morning, um, as I was just kind of praying, and I was like, God, what's with the weather? And the Lord was like, You can't. You can't, you know, you, you, you have to expect that today's weather is not going to be tomorrow's weather, weather, mm-hmm. so always be ready. Mm. Right. And uh, exactly. obviously it was more than just about the weather, yeah. you know, it was about life, right? Like you can't expect right. tomorrow to be like your mm-hmm. today. You can't expect every relationship to be like the ones that you've had. So be ready. Right. Mm-hmm. And right. with that, talking about that agility and the ability to flow with what life brings you. Um, and, and Shay, I think that's where you, when you and I connected, we really connected a lot in our desire to see people be better than their current right. status, wherever they're at, you know, wherever they're at. talk exactly. to me a little bit about just the message in your book and, and the heart behind it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So uh, I wrote a book, th- um, three years. I was going to say I wrote a book and be better than you. I was going to say it all together, but <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote a book, Be Better Than You. Uh, it took me about three years to write it. And uh, the message behind it is basically that, is that there, there's nothing that you need to change about yourself, right? Mm, there's that's nothing good. Wrong with you, right. There's nothing wrong with you. And usually when we get into this state of mind that we want something different in our life, or we want to become a better person, we think of change and we think of the things that we need to change about ourselves. And I always, I always think of, uh, you know, when people are like writing so- songwriters, I'm a writer as well. And I work in the, the, you know, in storytelling. So I always think about when people are writing and then they take the piece of paper and they throw it out and then they start writing something else and they take this paper and they throw it out. And that's kind of the, 
image that I get when people are trying to figure out what to do with themselves or what to do with their lives. They figure out what do I need to change? What's so bad about mm-hmm. me that I need to make better? And it's like, well, that's it. You don't need to change anything. We just need to get better. That's and, the more that you understand, and it's really about understanding. And the more that you understand yourself, the more you will understand how to take advantage. Mm-hmm. So my book, Be Better Than You, is more so about demonstrating how we already have what we need to take our lives to the next level. That's good. And it's all based off of a deep rooted level of understanding. Yeah. And so I think, you know, I, I talk a lot about, I mean, Brittany, you've heard me say many times that the, that self-awareness is the number one mm-hmm. uh, proponent for overall success. Mm-hmm. And so right. really in a lot of ways, that's what you're saying is, you know, it's not about changing who you are. It's about understanding who you are. We of, often say like, we need to know what makes us tick and what ticks us off, right? That self-awareness. Right. Um, and so I, I hear you saying that let's put a pin in that for a moment because uh, we have to tell people about your background. Um, you are an animator for Disney. So talk to us a little bit just about your, I say, quote unquote, your day job, right? Right. Yeah, no, it, it's totally a day job. Mm-hmm. I, I've been an animator for over 12 years now. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've had the pleasure to work, you know, for Sony Pictures, Blue Sky, uh, PlayStation. And now right now I'm at Walt Disney Animation Studios, which was my dream job as, yeah, as a kid. Good for you. Yeah, I've wanted to be an animator since I was seven years old. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, getting older and going through that process, it always seemed super far fetched and like it wasn't real. It wasn't going to happen. I can't, there's no way I'm going to be able to be that talented, you know, for them to hire me. It's like, but I still strive for it, you know, yeah. and, uh, and, and thankfully, you, you know, I've, I've been blessed to, you know, it wasn't easy, obviously, mm-hmm. but, you know, my life is is built on imagination and faith. Yeah. So through the grace of God, I was imagination able to achieve and faith. I love faith. that. That's yeah. so good. That's, because really, how yeah. can you separate them? Right. Because mm-hmm. faith is really about letting God write on your mind's eye, letting him draw on your imagination, letting him show you things that don't exist. So, I mean, you can't separate one from the mm-hmm. other. I love that you said that. I appreciate that. Right. And, and faith is just believing in that and what's the picture that you create mm-hmm. in your mind and saying, OK, well, yeah, that mm-hmm. that's real. Right. Yeah. If you can think it, you can do it. Mm-hmm. If you can if you can imagine it in your mind, you can you can physically have it as mm-hmm. well. There's nothing that you can imagine that can't happen. And as Good. long as you have the faith and you believe that that's that is the case and that's mm-hmm. what you're meant to do. And that's what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you're home free. You're home free. So mm-hmm. I was just telling Brittany that you were you were casted to Maribel. Right. In Encanto. <laughs> so would you say that is your uh, greatest success so far is other than the book or um, it's a big I, question. You can be both. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it is kind of two things can be true type of yeah, scenario. Yeah, yeah. The book, to be honest, is is my greatest success. Yeah. You know, I've I've never had to animation has never called for what this book called for. You know, internally, faithfully, uh, just I was going through a lot while I was writing this book. There was a lot of different times that I could have turned away from writing it, justifiably so, mm-hmm. right? Um, and and I couldn't. Right. I I absolutely couldn't. So, you know, when you talk about purpose and the things that you're meant to do Mm -hmm. in my definition is what you can't walk away from. That's good. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for me, the fact that I finished this book and how hard it was, the fact that I wrote it completely by myself, there's no ghost writing, like Mm -hmm. nothing. Right. Right. Um, Yeah. And it's here and the feedback that it's received so far, uh, the emotional feedback that it's received so far is more than I can ever ask for where animation, it is a dream come true. And it's kind of like, I'm living two dreams, uh, but animation, I guess it was a little expected, Mm -hmm. right? You know, this is what I was striving for. This was the goal where the book just kind of came. Right. And uh, it was more so just me me listening to the Lord and following and following in those footsteps. And here we are. I had no idea where I was going, but here it is. Love it. Love it. So you talked about having some challenges while you were writing the book. Um, can you press into that a little bit? What kind of challenges did you face? And and, yeah. what, and what was that key moment where you you remember being like, nope, I'm going to keep pressing in? You know, what what gave you that drive? So it's two questions, really. Yeah, it's, yeah, those are two tough, two big ones. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, well, the first the first thing is, you know, um, I never actually sought out to write a book. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, it kind of just happened a little waywardly. You know, I, I, I talk about it in the book as well. 
uh, I was on the phone with my mom a couple of years ago, uh, probably about five, mm-hmm. six years ago at this point. Um, and we were just talking and kind of gossiping like we normally do, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we kind of keyed in on one person and I was just going on and on like I normally do. And I was just talking about what this person's missing, what they're not seeing. And, you know, maybe they could do this and they could do that. And I'm like, oh, why, 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 why don't people understand that? You know, and I'm like, you know what? And I just said it very casually, very jokingly, kind of, I should just write a book. Right. You know, because I'm talking to my mom. So, you know, I'm just like, I should just write a book. And so when I and when I said that, she just got very silent, like mm-hmm. dead silence. Mm-hmm. And my mom, she's a very spiritual, religious person. Right. And she's mm-hmm. who I follow in that aspect. And she just she said, oh, now that's the Lord getting ready to use you. Did you and feel, she, did you feel a physical shift in that moment? I did. I, I was so scared. I was like, I, cause I was just kidding. Right. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I was like, leave it oh, to mom. I didn't know what to yeah. do. Like it was actually a little scary to me that sure. she reacted that way. And because it was so scary to me, I just blew it off. I was just like, yeah, you know, and just kind of continued with what I was mm-hmm. doing, but because what I was saying, but because of the way she reacted, it was always just kind of etched in my, in the back of my mind to sure. write a book. Like maybe I should, cause it was new, but I never mentioned it. I wasn't serious about it. I had no admirations for it, but mm-hmm. just because of how she reacted, I was just like, maybe this is a thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, a couple of years later, I, I ended up working at a, I, went, I ended up moving to New York to work at a uh, to work at an animation studio. And they ended up rewriting the script, which gave us a lot of time on our hands to just kind of, you know, hang out. And uh, and I just thought about it. I was like, well, maybe I should maybe I should play around with this and see see how mm-hmm. it goes. So that's the how it originated. Yeah. And, OK. Uh, as far as the hardest part of writing the book, there's a lot of hardest parts because the first thing is I've never written a book before. Right. Right. Uh, writing wasn't my thing. I'm not a big reader. Uh, so writing a book just, it was very daunting, right? Yeah. It's like, how do I even go about this? So I had to read a lot of books. I had to start learning uh, cadence and writing and rhythm and tone and uh, things like that. And on top of that, I had to learn about what it is that I'm trying to. Yeah. What are you trying to communicate? I, mm-hmm. Right. What am I trying to communicate? What's the message that I'm trying to mm-hmm. put out there and how do I do that? Mm-hmm. And not only that, I have to figure out is what, what do I do? <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Like what, what do I do so well? You know, granted, I've always been the type yeah. of person mm-hmm. that people come to for advice and stuff like that, as far as perception and things like that. Uh, but I'm like to write a book, to communicate to someone that doesn't know me, Mm-hmm. It's like, I have to dig into my subconscious, right? Yeah, I have to good. really dig into myself and figure out what that is to communicate well, that. And, so that it, yeah. It, it and, and also, you know, I, I think we've discussed this. So I've written six books. I'm working on my seventh. But mm. you, you really, when you're in those moments, you have to really kind of pause to say, is this what I really believe? Mm. Is it, Do I really yes. believe this? It, so sometimes you kind of flippantly type something because it sounds really good. And you go, wait a minute. Do I really believe this? And is it something I should believe Mm -hmm. if I don't, or why do I believe it? So there are a lot of those moments where you have the opportunity to pause and reflect on why am I writing what I'm writing? Mm -hmm. Why did it just come right out like that? And do I really believe this? Um, and am I communi- and then, then there's the whole nother level of, am I communicating it? Well, cause sometimes things make sense to us. That's why I like to have somebody read chapters back to me. Like when I finish a chapter, I'll be like, Hey Brad, can you read this out loud to me? Because sometimes I fill in gaps, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but I really appreciate you saying that because you discover a lot about yourself and your core beliefs and your values as you're writing a book. Mm -hmm. You discover so much about yourself and you kind of challenge yourself in the Mm -hmm. process as well. Right. Like you said, do I actually believe this? Is this something that I actually do? And in some cases, and is it reflected in my lifestyle? Right. Exactly. Like, (laughs) is this like, is this valid? Is this viable? Is this something that I actually do? Or am I just, you know, spitting things out, right? You have to make sure that that's not the case either. So yeah, a a lot of work went into it and uh, for myself and just with the book, just thinking about my audience and, and, Mm -hmm. you know, what I want them to gain from it and how I want to say certain things because you don't want to lose people, which I'm sure you find that in writing as well. You know, it's like, Okay, well, I can't say it this way because I don't want them to fall off and assume this. Right. 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 So for our, for instance, a very vague um, and broad analogy would be like, okay, well, she's successful or whoever you consider successful, they probably haven't had to go through the things that I went through. Right. So right. it's like, okay, well, 
yeah, I, I have had to go through certain things. I have had to go right. through, um, you know, toxic families. I had, I did have to go through self-doubt and fear and fear paralyzing me and things like that. You know, uh, having my faith shaken, you know, like mm-hmm. I, I did have to go through those kinds of things to get to where I, to get to where I am. Mm-hmm. Right. So like, even like even writing the book, um, keeping those kinds of things in mind. So mm-hmm. people don't fall off and think like, Oh, she, you know, just right. assume whatever we want to assume and act like, you know, we're, mm-hmm. we all don't go through that. Yeah. No one writes for free. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, w- I often think when I'm writing a book, mo- the majority of books, and I am like you as well in that I'm not a big reader and which is hilarious because I, I've right. written so mm-hmm. many books, but yeah. I, I have started a lot of books and, um, you know, at some point it feels like a lot of authors just become super redundant and I'm like, yeah, I got it. And then I don't finish it. And so I'm super mindful of that when I'm writing a book that I'm like, I don't want to just fill up 120 pages because they tell you you should have at least 45 to 55,000 words. Like I want it to make, to make sure, which is a lot of times why I write my books in parts, like part one, part Mm -hmm. two, part three, because I want them to know like this part will be completely different than the first. They will, they will all mesh and they will be in harmony, but they're in some regard very different. And, and that's, I'm very intentional in that because I think you're Mm -hmm. right. You know, you've, you've, you got to have your reader in mind when you're writing. Um, but also you know, not be swayed so much by the reader that you compromise your message, exactly. you know, which can be right. hard as well, because everybody's going to have an opinion about your message. Oh yeah, for sure. And that's why it's, <laughs> that's why it's, yeah. And that's why it's important to make sure you understand what you want to communicate. Yes, right? for because sure. if you understand what it is that you're writing and what your message is and what you want to communicate, then it's, it's, it's harder to be swayed. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and so I, I did write the book my, myself, but I also had an editor. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, so when she got to the point where she was editing, there are certain points where she was like, Oh, we should say this like this instead. And I'm like, no, I have to say it this way. Mm-hmm. Right. And then there are some points where she, I, I thought she was right. I was like, okay, yeah, this is a little too wordy or, you know, maybe mm-hmm. the tone is a little kind of whatever. And I, I would listen to her, but it was, it was a back and forth thing. Yes. It wasn't just taking someone else's opinion yeah. and going with it because I have to keep that person in mind, that specific audience in mind and say, no, they have, it has to be said this way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For the impact to be what it needs to be. And mm-hmm. I'm sure you're the same way. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know if you know this or not, but my co-host, Brittany, is the voice behind my audiobooks. Just oh, saying. really? Yeah, oh, just wow. saying if you, want your, if, you, if you want your book narrated and <laughs> right. uh, uh, produced as an audio, she is a narrator for books. I'd be no, that is, that is a suggestion that I've been getting quite a bit, so mm-hmm. hopefully I can make that happen. Uh, it's a beating of a process, and she has mastered it. <laughs> As far as getting all the specs and everything, right? I mean, and she has mastered it. So I'm just throwing that out there, you know? Okay, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome, awesome. We'll have to do some takes, Brittany, and see see how you... How, how you sound if you sound yeah. like shit. Go to my <laughs> go to some of my books and listen to some of the audio and you'll be able to hear they, their samples yeah. oh, that yeah, you can sure. listen to, you know. Yeah, there's um like I know I'm supposed to write a book. Like this is so good because I know I'm supposed to write a book in my life. <laughs> and but the greatest challenge I have is that this information is all out there in other places. But it's that grasping onto the way I interpreted it and the way it happened in my life is still beneficial even though this information can be found other places, you know, and it's like, there's kind of nothing new under the sun, Mm -hmm. you know, you're, it's all been done. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. So how do you take that and make it new and create something new that's going to be beneficial to a reader? Yeah. Well, one of my catchphrases is life is filled with nothing new. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, even, even us, you know, we, we like to think that we're all different, but we're really just, we're all an expression, right? Yeah. We're all an expression of the exact same thing. And the key word is expression. So like you said, there's nothing new under the sun, but the difference is how we express it. That's right? good. And that's where, that's where creativity and uniqueness come into mm-hmm. play. You know, uh, there's nothing in my book that you may have probably never heard before right, right. It's, mm-hmm. it's probably some of the same stuff under the sun but the mm-hmm. difference is my delivery right, yeah. right? The, the the difference is the rhythm and like I said the tone and how my wordplay right how I word certain things mm-hmm. and the That's order so the order of operation within the book even how the chapters go because of the way I think about how I want to deliver this message 
that's what makes it completely different than so anything good. else. Good. Right. Yeah. The, the analogies are the, the concepts that I'm merging together. Right. The, the, to create a certain perception so they can so people can see things differently um, and have the story that I tack on behind it. You know, like these are the things that make great movies. These are the things that great mm-hmm. that make great stories. Right. Every mm-hmm. every movie that you've seen, it's it's all the same foundation. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. When, yeah. when you create a story mm-hmm. or you create a character, we start with the same foundation. So. So I wouldn't, yeah, that's, that's one thing I wouldn't be concerned about. I know a lot of people are concerned about that when they think like, oh, I want to write a book or I want to be a coach or I want to, you know, start a podcast. And they're like, oh, but there's so, there's a million out there, Mm -hmm. but that's, that's the uniqueness. That's your power. That's your advantage in the world and everything that you want to do. So knowing that your, your voice, (laughs) your voice speaks differently than everyone else's. Your voice speaks differently, but also you have a story to tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that's why I was like, when you throw in your personal, like, Hey, here's, here's a concept and let me share my story with that concept. Then that concept becomes personal through your story, Mm -hmm. you know? And so your, your, your expression and your story personalizes what often is just this ideal or this concept that's out there that I can read about on Google. And now all of a sudden it hits because I'm actually living the concept through somebody's story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like you said, it hits different and you're able to internalize it emotionally and get involved with the concept. Right. And see things a little bit differently. And it's so funny that you mentioned that, like the surface type of scenario, because I purposely named all of my chapters something very generic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because of that. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and because I also know that I dive deep into these chapters in ways that, you know, you probably never thought of before, right. Just a, just a new Mm -hmm. light and a different way Mm -hmm. of looking at things, especially when I tack on my story behind it, then talk about the concept and then wrap you around again with my analogies and stuff like that. You're like, holy shit. Like, oh, sorry. You're good. Like, this is not, you know, this is is nothing like I thought, you know, as far Mm -hmm. as that concept is concerned, as far as like think positive. Right. Mm-hmm. I have a chapter called Think Positive. It's like, okay, well, anybody can think of that chapter. Yes. Okay, I've heard that before. Yeah. Yeah. I already know what she's gonna talk about, but I can't tell you how much feedback I got from that chapter. Yeah, it's good. Right? Even be proactive. Uh someone actually someone actually told me before they were like, you know, you have this chapter called Be Proactive, and there's this baseline, be you know, proactive. um meaning behind in psychology behind what that is. Mm-hmm. But what you said, like how you break things down in your chapter and what you actually yes. say proactive means is completely the opposite of what, mm. what you they know, think they you think. know, psychologists and yes. stuff like the, the baseline drive. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what's important, Brittany, about, you know, having your own point of view and your own story and delivering it that way, because that may be what the people mm-hmm. in your life or the people in the world need to hear. They need to hear it that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. good. So I want to take a pause here and acknowledge some of our watchers that are watching live. Hope Jansen is with us this morning. Good morning, Hope. Uh, Morgan Kyler Peterson is watching us from YouTube live. Lisa Mapes is with us. Um, and of course, all the people that we had talked about earlier, several, several other people have chimed in. If you have a comment, a question, let us know in the comments. Um, if, if you just want to let us know you're here, send us a little waving emoji. That's what it's for. <laughs> we would love to let you know. I'm going to cut for a moment to the, your book so that we can um, actually get let people see your book. And we're going to put it up on the screen. Um, because I'm a visual person. So I'm like, we keep throwing the title out, but there it is. Sure, I, love right. this book. I love this yes, title, yeah. you know, um, the title is, or the, the cover is very well done. Mm-hmm. Um, and Thanks. of course you can see, it says you already have everything you need to take your life to the next level. How encouraging. Yeah. I, I love that statement where it's like, wait a minute, what? And that goes back to, we talk a lot in our world about the seed of God and how God put into you the seed for everything to live out a life fulfilled, purposed, um, Mm. in prospering, growing, increasing that the seed of God is in you. And then he wrapped that seed up with your personality and your flesh. And then of course we go through life and I love that you're like, Hey, there's a seed already in you. It's already there. We just want to help you discover it, water it, cultivate Mm -hmm. it, give it some nutrients and watch it flourish, Mm -hmm. but it's already there. It's not something we have to strive for. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, no, it, it's literally already there. And that's the, you know, that's, that's one of my biggest passions is helping people see that. Yeah. Right. It's like, I just want to expose it to you. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like, and it's so funny too, like when I'm, when I'm coaching people and I'm talking to them about uh, whatever they feel like their issues are, are their circumstances and I'll start digging. Right. Yeah. With questions. 
very probing questions. And very they'll start probing and, questions. And then they'll, yeah, right. <laughs> and then, um, so like even like even question what the, their answer. Like, why, yes. well, why do you think that way? Yeah. Right. And uh, and they'll start to answer their own questions. And I, so I, tell, I tell coaches when I'm talking about them, I said your most powerful question is going to be this. And what else? Mm-hmm. And what else? Right. Right. That's what I or say all the time. And what else? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I just, apologize. Go ahead. Just making well, no, it's 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 that it's it's just making people think, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. I think that's the problem is that many of us don't, mm-hmm. right? You know, we think because we have a brain, it's like okay, every every all the activity going on in our brain means that we're thinking, and that that doesn't that that's not the case. Thinking is a conscious process, mm-hmm. right? And if you're not conscious in in what you're thinking and the ideas that you have and for and you know formulating an idea with all the thoughts that you have, then yeah. you're not thinking. Yeah. Right. So asking these questions to, to people that I'm coaching, is like, yeah, they start, their face starts to light, yeah, light up you know, once they start answering these questions, because I'm not the one doing it. They're mm-hmm. doing it. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, that, so, and that's the beauty of it. So Shay, has your mom read your book? So actually my mom passed in 2020. Okay. So, so before or after you published the book? Before I published a book last year, actually on her birthday, which is May fifteenth, which is actually in two weeks. Okay, uh, so yeah, the, there are a lot of a lot of probably emotions around the releasing since she was the one who really just breathed life over that she statement. Did. She did. Yeah. What a Luckily beautiful. Yeah. What a beautiful way to honor your mom's your mom. You know. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, luckily, she knew I was writing a book. She uh-huh. actually made sure that she was per- she was persistent, even as she was, you know, yeah. um, going to tell me to finish it. Yeah, that I need to finish it. Um, she's read my writing before. Um, she knew the title of the book was Be Better Than You. She kind of had um, a awesome. say in the design of the book. Um, so she was a part of the process, which, yeah. you know, I couldn't be more grateful for. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I released it the year that um, the year that she passed. Okay. Or the year after she passed, year I'm she sorry. Passed on her birthday. Yeah. On, her, on birthday. her birthday. Yes, wow. exactly. So, wow. Well, but uh, again, yeah. what a beautiful, what a beautiful way to honor her and honor her memory and that she just was the one that really just spoke that life into the, into the book. Oh so, yeah. For sure. One of the things that you mentioned to me when we talked um, earlier is in, it's going back to the idea of expressions and how animation um, is really all about being able to capture um, the emotions of a character and then being able to capture that emotion in a literal expression. Right. And you talked about how really, um, your experience with animation has helped you understand human behavior a lot. Can you share a little bit and how that's kind of helped you with the book? Oh yeah. I found that fascinating. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Animation, uh, it's, it is breathing life into, into still objects. Right. Um, so for instance, Mirabelle, she's, she's just like this. She's just still, you mm-hmm. know, no facial, no nothing. And it's our job to figure out, you know, first of all, who she is, right. Mm-hmm. As a person, she's her own person. So studying who that character is, her background, uh, her family and things like that. And then you get into obviously animating her, which is my job. And depending on the storyline and where she is in the movie, it's, I have to decide how she's going to react, how, what she's thinking, how she's feeling, her body language, and plan that out as mm-hmm. her, not as Shay, right. right? Which is which is the the challenge in animation is you know uh, you can't just pretend like oh I'm going to pretend I'm this person, I'm going to pretend that I'm jumping over this car and falling down, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, well, you can't just do that. You have to think about who this person is, how they are, what their mannerisms are, for instance, pointing. If mm-hmm. someone's going to point, you can't just you can't just go like that because this is how Shay points. Shay points like this, but somebody else might point like this. Right, mm-hmm. right. Or somebody else uh-huh. might, you know, be a little more insecure, so mm-hmm. they'll kind of drop down and be like, mm-hmm. kind of like that, you know? So the manner, like studying those mannerisms and personality and mixing them together with the situation that the character is in is where it gets really challenging, but that's actually my job. So uh, doing that for 12 years and getting into the mind of different characters and different characters with different personalities, different ba- backgrounds, different morals, some that I may be the complete opposite of, right? Some that I may not even agree with, but I have to make them so believable that the audience will, you know, connects with this person mm-hmm. and believe that this person is who they are, mm-hmm. right? So that's, that's a real challenge uh, with animation and even if someone's feeling sick, I've had, I've had shots before and it's, it sounds crazy, but I've animated a character who was sick and I 
promise <laughs> that I actually started to feel sick yeah. because I was so absolutely, into them. absolutely, I was, yeah, I totally. was so into them. And and as an animator, we're, we're we animate, we move everything right, mm-hmm. the face uh, going from here to here to here to here. So if a character's going like this, you're doing every part of that. Mm-hmm. So as far if they're feeling sick or if they're feeling sad or if they're feeling excited, you start to feel some of that. That's right. So you good. start to get emotionally connected with that. So uh, with that being said you know, coaching, writing a book, understanding people's behavior and mindset and the thought process. Uh, it's, it's, it's natural for me mm-hmm. to absorb all that mm-hmm. and observe all that on top of, you know, me kind of always being an observant child. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like animation just exaggerated everything that I always was. And then it's just like, I'm just constantly getting better. Like my skill set is just constantly rising because it's something that was a hobby for me as a kid. Mm-hmm. I loved observing people. And then animation, that's our job is to observe and study and, you know, kind of be elite in that, in that aspect, as far mm-hmm. as human behavior is concerned and thoughts. And then coaching and writing a book, it's just, I'm getting even deeper and now, and now I'm getting even deeper into myself. So Mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's really beautiful to be able to have that level of perception. Um, And because like I have said recently, you know, it gives you a certain level of foresight, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. That's, that's super powerful and scary at the same time. Yeah. (laughs) I say it's so interesting how this God-given gift of discernment and awareness of people's emotions and stuff has transpired in such different ways and different yeah like that's good you know different employment and you know and stuff from a book to being an animator and some people may just go well I have this gift and I'm an animator but you've been able to expand that and be like no and this gives me insight into this and this gives me insight into this and I just think that's yeah it is cool it is cool I mean or even the opposite to say well because I have the ability to really discern and repeat read people and understand the heart behind their expressions some people mm-hmm. might say, oh, well, you should be a counselor, mm-hmm. but you could also be an animator. <laughs> yeah, right. No, yeah, you could easily be an animator. And that's the, that's the, and that's, that's the beauty of life is that there's so many different yes. things you can do with one talent, yeah. one skill set, right? And it's like, you can, there's like, there's an umbrella of stuff you can do. And that's another thing that I try to explain to people. You don't have to just stick to one thing, yeah. right? And, you know, you have to allow yourself to evolve and grow, yeah. you know, and, and it's okay to expand as well. Yeah. Right? Right. So even with animation, you know, uh, I'm kind of slowly making my way out of it, you Mm -hmm. know, um, slowly, but like, so it could be years from now, but it's just like, I achieved that, you know, my Mm -hmm. dream was to work at Disney and Mm -hmm. become an animator and work on movies and things like that since I was a kid. And it is also very unusual to be cast, casted to a a character. Is that correct? Don't you typically work like in groups? Or is it? That yeah, it's a, it's a team effort for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, for me, I only worked on Mirabelle uh, in the movie. So, but on other movies and just in general, it it doesn't necessarily always happen that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes there are certain certain there are certain members of the team who are casted on us uh, to supervise a certain character. Okay. Not necessarily this is the only character you're going to animate. When that kind of stuff usually happens, when it's the only character you animate, is usually if you do a good job and they and they like a certain thing about yeah. how you um, express with that character, then you'll probably keep getting them. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's what I was thinking. So that that's kind a of a, that was a big deal that you were casted to Maribel. Which we were, yeah, I don't know what someone was talking about. Really for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that was a bell. I'm like, in case you guys aren't picking up, like, that's a big deal. Typically, not just one person is casted to a character. It's usually right. a team of people that are casted to a character, which just says a lot about your talent and your diligence and um, and what a beautiful movie as well. Oh, yeah. You know, beautiful amazing. movie. And so I was like, we were thinking about like Maribel and how express, I, like after I met with you the last time, I was like, I got to go back and watch the movie again. Just because <laughs> oh, I was like, right. now I feel like I'm paying attention to the way she expresses things. But I, right. I really il- appreciated the way you were able to say, because, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, how do you make the leap from being a Disney animator, a successful Disney animator to I want to write a book over here? Because you know, I mean, I've written books and I tell people all the time, like, you don't write a book to get rich. You you write a book oh, because wow. you have a message burning in your heart. Right. And so I'm like, how do you how do you get from one point to the other? Mm-hmm. And that that for her, that link is it's really all about helping people, people. express who they are, yeah. come into the you know what I mean? And coming into bringing it to life, bringing mm-hmm. things in people to life, bringing animated characters Why to not? life. Yes. 
yeah. yeah bringing people to life bringing like you said their 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 own character to mm-hmm. life you know and like i said just understanding the advantage that they have in the world just by being who they are mm-hmm. you know just being who you are it can take you further than you can imagine mm-hmm. right um and like i said there's nothing to change about yourself so i just like to like get in there and just pull that out and liberate liberate people to That's where they're good. like yeah like not only just they're just motivated i don't yeah. want to motivate you i want to empower you i want to liberate good. you i want yeah. you to under i want you to be ready to run through yeah. a, brick, a brick wall yeah. you know because you act like you believe in it you're going to do yes. it right not just not just hit or miss like oh i'm motivated today and then i'm not the next day right know. right you yeah know, i i, I, don't, I, I don't like when i go places and i hear a speaker that's really inspirational it makes me crazy I'm like, you have not helped me at all because tomorrow I'm still going to have all my issues. Mm -hmm. You know, all I, all you did was make me feel better for a moment. Um, right. I so, want you to be relatable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. I'd rather, I'd rather you tell me your really sad story and how right. you muscled your way through it. than right. just get up there and be like, you can do a team, you know, yeah, everybody stand weird. up and it's say, weird. I'm a winner. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's definitely weird. And that's why I'm kind of, uh, with the way affirmations are, presented mm-hmm. like the in society right now the mm-hmm. trend of affirmations surface level i'm not a fan of yeah right because it's very you know i am this i am that and you're kind of proclaiming that which is great you mm-hmm. know but like i said the way the light of what affirmations is on the light that affirmations is under right now i'm really not for because i i, I feel like it's misguided mm-hmm. uh because it is surface and you're telling yourself something you obviously don't necessarily necessarily believe Mm -hmm. right and it's and it's tough because the only reason i i don't like it so much is because (laughs) you have to be careful who you're talking to right right it's it's a very sensitive topic Uh, self-development is very sensitive for me Mm -hmm. right or just growth in general so if if your if your audience is obviously someone who needs help with a certain thing you know which is why these mm-hmm. influences are out there to help their audience, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you have to be careful to say, all you have to do is say, I am this, I am that, and you will be that. Right. There's right. more to it than right. that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's that's kind of why I'm, I'm not a, a huge fan yeah. because if you, if you say, you know, I love myself, every day you're saying I love myself, but you don't really love yourself and you mm-hmm. re- kind of regurgitate after you say that and mm-hmm. you don't have any help because the influencers are just saying, just say right. I love myself every day mm-hmm. and you'll and you will magically love yourself. But if I'm regurgitating every time I say that, I need help. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't mm-hmm. how is that gonna get better? Right. Right. So right. for me, I like to actually get into that. Yeah. Right. Let's dive into that and let's talk about yeah. what you don't love about yourself. Why is it a challenge right? that you're having a hard why time? Why is this a challenge for mm-hmm. you? Right. Yeah. And let's let's actually unpack yeah. that and get all the skeletons out of the closet. That way yeah. we can see them. And yeah. then we can start to put things back together, right? right. And this, like I said, I want to show you where your power is. Mm-hmm. But for us, for me to do that, we have to lay the cards out, mm-hmm. right? And we have to be genuine about it, yeah. right? And I, you know, we do do a lot of biblical affirmations in our world where you declare, like, if God says you are this, then we're going to declare that that's what I am, right? But we right. are very, right. also very intentional to be like, this is, this is very different than just faking it. So it's mm-hmm. okay to say, I'm declaring this is what I am based on what God says, but in my heart and in my right. mind, I'm challenged. Mm-hmm. And, and so it has to be for, for me, it's an and, right? So I need you declaring these things on faith, but we're also mm-hmm. not going to fake it or pretend like that you're actually in alignment with them. That's part of the process of coming yeah. into an alignment, but it's just part of the process. It's not the oh, answer. Yeah. And so I think you're right. I think the, you know, influencers, if you're not really careful in how you present it, you're, you're presenting that as the answer instead mm-hmm. of part of the process. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you. For us in our yeah, world, it is absolutely exactly a very it. important part of the process because it's a very people, important part it of the is process. a part of the process, exactly. but it's just a part of the process. Um, and so, yeah, I, I feel that in saying like, look, because what's happening is, is we're teaching people to fake it. Moreover, we're also teaching them to feel a sense of shame that I'm supposed to be declaring this and saying this, and I'm supposed to be feeling it. And all it's doing is exposing how short I am of feeling that Mm -hmm. and being that and believing that. And then it's hard to deal with Yes. Right. And now that's the state of mind that they're Mm -hmm. in. And that's going to be hard to get out of because what's the next step? Like Mm -hmm. you said, it's getting presented as the answer. And then we don't know what the next step is for when we're in this kind of, you know, uh, demoting state of mind, right? right? Because from empowering to, you know, self-loathing, right? And it's like, okay, well, what's the next step? And that's something that's really important to me and that I go through in my book. And Mm -hmm. 
this is why it took so long. And because I'm like, no, it, you know, it has to be set this way. I need to dive into that. I can't just say things and then move on. Yeah. I have to, I have to tell you what I'm talking about. I have yeah. to explain the scenario and things like that. And That's affirmations, so uh, you know, my, my take on that. And like I said, think positive and being proactive and all that kind of sure. stuff. I dive really deep into it. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I know I, I share in my, the first book I ever wrote in, in it's uh, what well, it's just been changed. It got picked up to by a publisher and they changed the title. It's called come and see now. And so, uh, um, but in it, I talk a lot about how for me, when I first became a believer, and I really struggled very deeply with clinical depression and panic anxiety attacks. And I would come home from church or from Sunday school things or from small group, whatever with women. And I would actually f feel like all of the things in church that I was being told and that I was being taught all it did was expose how much I was falling short mm -hmm. of who I was supposed to be. So because there was no empowerment there, it right. was just a telling you that this is who you're supposed to be as a believer. The joy of the Lord is your mm -hmm. strength. And I'm like, okay, okay, but I have no joy in my mm -hmm. heart. So I guess that means I'm weak. And it just exacerbated because there was that loss of discipleship, which is what the book's all about is really talking about how the whole world is discipling people except for the church. <laughs> all right. we're doing in right. the church is giving information mm -hmm. and telling people how they're supposed to live their life, but not coming alongside them and really teaching them. You've talked mm -hmm. quite a few times about being a coach. Press into that a little bit for us. Tell us if somebody's listening, if they're interested in connecting with you, how can they find you? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, first off, you can find me on Instagram at shaystone.s. Uh, you can go on www.bebetterthanyou.com and there's a coaching or uh, work with me one-on-one -on -one or something like that. I might've changed it, okay. um, but you can, find, <laughs> you, can find, you can find coaching on there for sure. And uh, that's where, I, that's where I am. And I love doing it. And it's, you know, like I said, I love empowering people and, and showing them the way and just demonstrating, like you said, that they already have everything they need. And mm -hmm that you have to continue to move. Right. And just right. It, like, I'm all about forward motion. So, yep. uh, for me, I I'm, I'm more of a coach that it's, it's done with you, not for you. Right. Right. So I'm going to work with yeah, you. So, absolutely. Right. So as you're, long the, you're as, the player when it comes to the game time, I'm not playing the game with yeah, you. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not playing for you. <laughs> right. No, you're playing for yourself. But as long I tell people all the time, I was like, it's like go-karts. As long as you're moving, I'm, I'm going to be right there behind you. So when I hit you go even further, Oh, that's good. But if you're not moving and I'm hitting it, I, nothing, nothing happens. You're just going to be right? getting whitlash yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> right, exactly. yeah yeah so, so that's shay right you think there. you'll write another book yeah i think so okay sure. do you have a topic in oh, mind uh I, I i definitely think that i'm going to uh be more uh specific like so like kind of like one topic at a time this time mm -hmm. uh for for be better than you i kind of cover the base areas because uh my audience mm -hmm. at the time were young adults and my goal was to help them jumpstart their lives sure. right That's turn good. decades into days so they don't have to you know mm -hmm. waste their 20s turn or 30s whatever the days. case is or teenage years you know kind of trying to figure out the things that i've already figured out um so i cover self reflection i cover mm -hmm. finance health being proactive ignorance uh being present you know your environment things like that toxic, you know, families and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, so moving forward, I probably would just dive into one specific, one specific uh, mm -hmm. yeah, one specific topic at a time and just mm -hmm. real, cause each chapter in the book, I feel like it, it was very tough. And, uh, my editor and I, we had to keep shaving it, yeah. <laughs> right. Because I actually feel like I could make a book out of each, each chapter. chapter. So yeah. I, yeah, yeah. So I think that's something that I'm probably going to end up doing. Good for you. Good for you. Well, we really appreciate you being here today. It was a pleasure was having you. It was fun to have, yeah, have you and uh, maybe we'll have you again, especially if you get yeah, that no, second sure. book we out. Should. We'd love to connect with you. Uh, Brittany, it's always good seeing you. Yeah, I know. Hey, guys. Until <laughs> yeah, now, great, listen, Brittany. now we I'm will... looking forward to hearing about that book. Too. Yeah, right. All we right. will not be it's here in June. Uh, the studio will be down in June, so there will be no episode in June. But we will catch you guys in July. And remember, from now until next time, Enforcing Purpose, it, it starts, starts with, with you. you.